name's Shelby and you're watching Read and Find Out. So this is going to be my first video in a new series called MBTI Recommendations. For those of you who don't know, I'm talking about the Myers-Briggs Type Indicator, which is a personality inventory. The MBTI is broken up into 16 different types, but I'm not doing 16 videos. The 16 different types consist of four different letters, so it's like a four-letter code. The first is either E or I, extroversion or introversion. Then there's sensing versus intuition, S versus N. Thinking versus feeling, which is T or F. And judging versus perceiving, J or P. So that gives you a four-letter code, so like I am an INFJ. So I'm going to do a video for each specific preference. And in each video, I'll tell you at the beginning a little bit about what the preference actually means, since there are some misconceptions in the common population, and how I think that translates into books that people tend to like. And I'm starting today with introversion, because introversion and extroversion is the first preference, and I am an introvert. And in true introvert fashion, I decided to have some tea today in this video, so this is Earl Grey. Disclaimer though, just because you're an extrovert doesn't mean that you won't like the books I'm saying might be introverted in nature, and also just because you're an introvert doesn't mean that you'll like the books that I'm saying I think have introvert qualities. But also these preferences are really kind of on a spectrum. Like I may lean towards introversion, but I obviously have extroverted qualities as well. So you're never just going to be either I or E or T or F. Everybody is a blend of all of these qualities. Some of us just have a more distinct preference than others. So introversion. I think in common culture everybody kind of looks at the introvert or the introvert character as being shy or reclusive when that is not actually the case. There might be a slight tendency towards those behaviors, but that's because of what an introvert actually is. The introversion versus extroversion preference really has to do with where you gain energy and where you put your energy. So for the introverts, that's the inner world whereas the extroverts gain and put their energy into the external or outer world. So because of this, introverts might be especially reflective. They might be very idea-focused. There is an emphasis placed on the internal. And introverts also generally are slower to act. They're more slow-moving, not necessarily because of a lack of energy, but because of that reflective quality. And so sometimes this manifests itself in people being a bit shy or a bit reserved, just because it's going to be more taxing for them to put that energy out into the world. They have to be not more stingy with the energy, but more selective. And I know that's the case for me. Even though I really enjoy social functions and hanging out with friends, I can't do it constantly all the time, which nobody really can, but it's a bit draining for me. I need to rest and relax a little bit when I'm done hanging out with people. So the five books that I have picked as introvert book recommendations tend to be a bit more slow moving. They're often character focused or idea focused rather than being super plot driven. And in line with the focus on the inner life, some of these have interesting narration styles that I think the introvert can really appreciate. But again, if you're an extrovert, you could still like these books. If you're an introvert, you still may not like these books. I just think that these books embody the qualities of an introvert well. And the first one is going to be Persuasion by Jane Austen. And I think that Persuasion works as an introverted book because of the character of Anne Elliot, the protagonist. When Anne was in her early 20s, she broke off an engagement with a man that she loved due to the pressure of her family and friends, and she went along with what they wanted for her. But now she's in her later 20s, and he's come back into her life in some way, and she's trying to decide how she wants to go about speaking up for herself and what she actually wants. And also potentially changing his opinion of her because he wasn't down with her throwing him to the side because of the opinions of her family and friends. He doesn't know that he wants to be with somebody like that. And I think that this is an issue that introverts could face pretty easily because we often are more quiet and sometimes the important people in our lives feel like they can have more of a say in what we say or do because we are the quiet ones. And I really like how Anne is taking that control back in this book. But she's not doing it in a way that's out of character for her. She's still being herself and true to herself, she's just growing. So I think that this is really kind of a quiet love story. Whereas with Lizzie and Darcy, I would say that it's more extroverted almost because they have that drama and flair and humor that's going on constantly. Whereas Anne's feelings for Wentworth are, aren't quite as explosive. They are a bit more reserved, but they're still definitely there. And I think this book also tackles the topic of loneliness well, because introverts feel lonely too, even if we do have a preference for being by ourselves a bit more often. Because being in disagreement with family and friends puts you in an uncomfortable place. 
and especially with introverts, those are the people that you hold the closest to you because you have a smaller group of people that you want to expend your energy on. And that's why I think that Persuasion is the perfect introvert classic. The next recommendation that I want to make is The Lord of the Rings Trilogy by J.R.R. Tolkien. Now I know that you may be thinking, well this is fantasy and it's action and adventure, but if you have read The Lord of the Rings Trilogy, you know that it is very slow moving and very description heavy. <laughs> So I think that that's something that an extrovert may have a bit harder of a time reading and enjoying because there's that need for a bit more faster pace and the external world is more the focus, whereas this can take its time getting to what it wants to do. Though I do still want to put a disclaimer on this and say that I think that if you don't like Tolkien's writing style in general, in the first book it probably won't get better for you as you read the trilogy, so that's not a good sign, because I think that his style is very description heavy. And also I'd say the story is more process oriented rather than having like a fast paced plot. This is more of a long journey instead of getting straight to the point. So this one may not be for everybody, but I think as far as fantasy goes, this is one that I would call a bit more introverted rather than extroverted. Even if it's not giving a lot of attention to the internal process of the person, there's still the process of the group. Next up we have The Book Thief by Marcus Zusak. This is a YA World War II historical fiction that is narrated by death. And even though sometimes that bothered me in this book because you're often spoiled a little bit for things that are going to happen ahead in the story because death is narrating so death knows what happens in the story, it's still really cool and a bit lyrical. This is another one that's very slow moving and very character focused, though I didn't even realize how invested I was in the book until I got to the end and then started crying. <laughs> I thought that I was feeling kind of so-so about it because it just felt like it was going slowly along and not much was really happening, we were just watching this character grow and grow up. But then when I got to the ending I realized, oh I actually do really care about these characters and this long journey really helped me to do that. Like I said, a lot of these books aren't going to be plot focused, and this one definitely wasn't because not a whole lot happens other than that it's set in the World War II period. The narration by Death though adds this really reflective quality to the writing that I think introverts can appreciate. Now we have one that I know I'm going to be gushing over a lot in the weeks and probably months to come, and that is The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemisin. Also, a side note, The Stone Sky is on the Booktube SFF Awards shortlist for Best Fantasy, and I am so excited, and I'm going to be getting a copy of The Obelisk Gate soon, and I can't wait. So this is a dystopian fantasy that has some very sci-fi elements, but it is not your traditional epic fantasy because it's also a bit epic. <laughs> this book is very idea-heavy, and I don't want to say too much about how it's idea-heavy because I think that that is so fun to kind of unravel for yourself. The culture of this world and the society at first is kind of confounding because you don't understand why things are the way they are, and you kind of gain that knowledge as the story goes on. This is another book that a lot happens and a lot doesn't happen at the same time. That one is hard to explain unless you've read it, and I don't want to say anything because I feel like that could be spoilery. This book is following three perspectives. There's Esun, who is a woman in her early 40s who recently found her young son was beaten to death by her husband and has run away with her daughter, and she is trying to find him. Her son was beaten by her husband because he found out he was a magic user, an origin, and the origins in the stillness, this world, are oppressed because they are powerful but they are also viewed as dangerous and they need to be controlled. So you're following Asun with that and realizing that she has a lot of stuff in her background, in her story, in her history. Her perspective is also told in second person, so you did this, you think that. Then the second perspective is of Demaya. She's a young origin child who is being taken away from her family to go to the Fulcrum, which is kind of a governmental organization who train origins to be used by the government. And then finally there is the perspective of Sienet who is a fourth ringer in the fulcrum, the fulcrum being on a ten ring scale as far as the hierarchy of power. And she has been put on a mission with a man named Alabaster, and that is all I'm going to say. Sienet's perspective was my favorite perspective, though Esun's was equally interesting, and Demaya's. I mean, I just loved this book. <laughs> with the second person narration that I mentioned from Esun's perspective, that's so interesting. I think that it gives this depth again to the whole inner life of her character 
which is really aligned with the introvert way of being, in my opinion. There's also the fact that all three of these characters are a bit private. They're not just sharing their lives with everybody, and that makes them relatable. Even if at times they do things that aren't necessarily good or moral, you still can understand them as a person. The characters in this book are realistic. Also, the fifth season is diverse as heck, and I love it, and it's beautiful. So I cannot wait to read The Obelisk Gate. <laughs> I'm pretty sure this entire trilogy is going to be very idea heavy and very identity heavy and I cannot, as an introvert particularly, that excites me so much. And then finally I have the recommendation that is probably the most intuitive and that is Introvert Power by Lori Helgo. And by intuitive I don't mean intuitive versus sensing intuitive, I mean this makes the most sense because introvert is in the title. This is a book that I read as one of my psychology reads, though really it's very self-help. This book is full of practical tips on how to live with your introversion, not as in it's like a disease, but how to make the most of your introversion and your qualities and live a life that is the most appealing to you and that uses your energy in the most efficient way. There are examples about like your living space and how you use your time that I found really beneficial to think about, particularly as I move forward into my professional career and I really am going to need to focus on that self-care. So this is a good one just for getting ideas about how you want to live your life as an introvert. But that is going to be it for this video. I'm going to be doing seven more of these to go along with the other preferences. I was really excited to do this and a little bit nervous, so comment down below and let me know if you have read any of these and what you thought of them, if you read them. And also, are there any books that you think really suit the introvert preference? Let me know because I'd love to compile a list. Thank you for watching, I hope you have a good day, and until next time, bye.